twist start the padlock Now welcome to the hidden place Bouncing My pal is just my throne And I ain't taking prisoners Hope heaven is your home And dismiss you in the history Afraid to miss you when you gone And uh, uh When I'm on I always sway by the other energy If it's faith Then it's what it's meant to be If it's fake You won't find it meant to be But don't entertain With a waste of batteries I'll be all home To the mountain clip That we go To the mountain top of sea low Let me rap with something we wrote <laughs> Yeah, yeah Invoke realness Won't talk to feelings It won't stop me, you're winning I'm planting seeds everywhere I go in it I'm Running it, DMC Russell Simmons from the mountain top 303, closer to the heavens Can't let what they think of me Persuade my vision in the space Where the vision speaks What's only visible in my POV Bearing all the pain, trying to be low key. I know there's better days every day I see. Just cause you got a little fame, don't be your BOG. Hot rhythm like, so I keep my head up till the doves fly. And I keep my head up when the doves cry. Candlelight lit up when no sunshine. When the battle every time I wake up, see the sunrise. Yeah, 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 yeah. Integrated now. Uh, been elevated now. Uh, yeah, hella hated oh, now. We sway by the other energy. If it's faith, then it's what it's meant to be. If it's fake, you won't find it meant to be. But don't entertain with a waste of batteries. I'll be all To the mountain cliff that we go. To the mountain top of sea low. Let me rap with something we wrote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Invoke realness. Won't talk to feelings. It won't stop me, your will. And I'm planting seeds everywhere I go.
Revelation is defined as the act of revealing hidden truths. God communicating divine truths. Unlocking mysteries. And when our eyes are opened, the darkness is flooded with great light. Immediately deliverance has come and freedom has come. This freedom isn't just for you or me, but for our families, our communities, and the generations connected to us. His word, by his spirit, for his kingdom. This isn't just any church. This is Revelation Church. Hello, you all, and welcome to Revelation Church. We will now inform you of our Lifeline Essentials. Your attention is key, as this may differ from any church service you've experienced before. If this is your first visit, we welcome and greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus. If you've already been here before, it's great to see you again, family. How are you staying connected? The information booth is where you can find our Lifeline QR code so you can officially become a member of Revelation Nation. And to those who are watching online, don't worry. You can scan the code too. We love to have you join us online. Beyond joining us every Sunday and every Prophetic Thursday, it's important to keep growing spiritually. Sign up for Power Shot, a daily devotional on realms of meditation led by Prophet Lovi himself. You could visit us on prophetlovi.com. And it doesn't stop there. We love growing middle schoolers and high schoolers here at Revelation Youth. On top of that, we meet in person on Fridays and every Tuesday for Global Zoom Prayer. Daughters of Revelation, hosted by Prophetess Maggie, gather together every first Tuesday of the month, and the whole Rev Nation family come together to pray every first Saturday of the month with Apostle Gershon. Zoom link available. The world is changing all around us, and your help enables us to spread the message of Jesus. You can do this by connecting what matters most to you to who matters most to you. When you give your offering in-house, please write legibly using the envelopes in the seat back in front of you. Prefer to give online? The accepted methods will appear on your screen. Be sure to follow us on all social media platforms and tag us in your pictures and your videos. Many people worldwide have encountered this house and the message of Jesus. All because someone liked, subscribed, and shared something very real happening right here. If you have any questions, just stop by the information booth in the lobby or visit the website at revelationchurchla.org. Thank you for your attention. We know this will be a service where you will encounter God. The time is now. Your time is now. The Lord has something just for you. Good morning, Revelation Nation. We are so blessed to be here this morning. Are you guys excited to be here this morning? Amen. Y'all sound ready to me. <laughs> and it's just a blessing. This yes. is the first Sunday of April coming off a of phenomenal Resurrection Sunday. Yes. But there's so many things that's going on in this house in April, mm -hmm. and we're excited. And first, I want to say you look beautiful today, you. Deidre. You know what? It's always sunshine. It look sure at is. And that. I want to give a very special welcome to all of our online viewers. We want to let you know that distance is never a barrier in the spirit. So make sure you guys are getting active in that chat. Let us know where you're watching from. And make sure you're also liking, sharing, and subscribing. Amen. Amen. So let's get into a few things yes. today. Dancers. Revelation Nation, any dancers in the house? Amen. So today, if you have marked your calendars, this is the day. Auditions are going to be this month. But we're having um, first orientation immediately following church service today. So if you have not registered, please register at revelationchurchla.org. 
orientation is to gather all the information concerning this ministry before you audition. So please be sure if you haven't, please register. At this time, auditions will be held only for adults 18 and up. So today, yes. we're looking for those dancers. So we get sure ready. Are. Today is the get day. Ready. Today is the day. And also this Monday, we have something very exciting coming up. Were you blessed by daughters this so month? Blessed. Always blessed. Yes, it's Amen. always a blessing. So our Daughters of Revelation recap is this coming Monday at 6.30 p.m. on our Revelation Church YouTube channel. Join us as we go live to discuss highlights, key takeaways, and ensure everyone connects with the word from daughters this month. Amen. Amen. So we have daughters going on. We have the dance ministry, but we're going to talk about the youth ministry. So youth ministry will meet well, every I Friday. Give a quick oh, correction. It's yes, actually yes. next Monday for daughters. Next Monday. Okay. Yes. Next Monday for daughters. So amen. amen. Mark your calendars for that. So we're going to get into youth ministry. Every Friday they're going to meet at 6 30 p.m. But they have switched things up a bit. From now on, the middle schoolers will meet twice a month, and the high school students will meet twice a month. With that being said, they are having their first paint and chill night. Isn't that exciting? That's so exciting. But this will only be for high schoolers. So please, be sure to register your high school students for the paint and chill on April 12th at 6.30 p.m. Amen. And bring your friends. I'm kind of jealous. I want to go. <laughs> so also, I want to bring up that our singles ministry is hosting their first summit on April 19th at 7 p.m. And this will be where they will engage in deep conversations and share personal journeys and insights. Mm -hmm. This event is open to adults age 18 and up. You can attend either in person or online where you will receive a private link. Mm -hmm. Visit revelationchurchla.org to register because you do not want to miss this. Amazing. This is exciting. Yes. My goodness. And today is a very special it service. Is. It is. Yes. It is. Who is excited that? for our debt cancellation Woo! service? And we hope that you brought everything, whether it's a bill, anything that you have related to, whatever debt in your life, today it is over. It's going to be done. Yes. Amen. I'm so happy. Be yes. I know you guys are excited. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy because this church is equipping us so yes. much financially. We've had Manage My Wealth, mm -hmm. and now we have a little boost with our debt cancellation service. So I want you guys to make sure your hearts are ready because this is going to be a phenomenal, powerful service. Amen. Yes. Amen. So a little bit of housekeeping. So if you have recently um, left a Bible or any small thing, personal items, please be sure to visit our info booth in the lobby in the Lost and Found. So anything that you left behind will only be here for two weeks. So if you have anything missing, please hurry up and get over there and get your things. Yes. Amen. So we want to welcome you guys yes. again, and we want you all to stand to your feet and get excited because we are going to go live for prayer with our very own Apostle Gershon. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we rise? Can we rise? It is the day that the Lord has made. The word of God says, praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Hallelujah. Welcome to all that have joined us online. God richly bless you. We love you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of an instrument tonight. This morning, praise him. Praise him. Has he been good to you? Praise him with a tremble. Praise him in a dance. Hallelujah. Praise him with string instruments. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Oh, come on. I can hear you this morning. I can hear you this morning. Lift your voice 
and give the King of glory praise in the house this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, I was glad when they said to me to come into the house of the Lord. You know why? Because there is peace in His presence. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voice and thank God for this opportunity that we have to come into His presence. The Word of God says He first called us. He first called us. He first called you and I. So as you lift your voice, I want you to know that help has come on your behalf. Help has come on behalf of your family. Help has come on behalf of your situation. Lift your voice and say, Thank you, Lord. Made Bradosha, Rabba Baraba Sanda Baba, Ebrene Makanda Labaraba Zonda, Rama Sanda Baba Rabaki, Indelebrana Majonda Baba, Manda Labrada Bazaya. Lift your voice and decree and declare this morning. I did not come to faint, Lord, but I came to receive of your blessing. I came to receive of your blessing. And my body is receptive to divine intervention. And my situation, oh Lord, as I give it unto you, your word says, Lord, that you are able, oh Lord. I came to sing a new song. Ranamanamakata. I came to sing a new song. It is a song of victory. I thank you, Lord, that the angels of the Lord have been released on our behalf. They go, they go, they go, they go. They accomplish what the word says they will accomplish. For they are our help. I need somebody to speak into their weak, that your weak is blessed, that your weak is blessed. It is well with you, it is well with your family, it is well with your home, that you are blessed going out, you are blessed coming in. I need you to make declarations. Why? Because you are the redeemed of the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm looking for people who know that they are the redeemed of the Lord. No weapon fashioned against us will prosper. Every tongue that rises against us, we condemn. Ah, we will see the goodness of the Lord. Where we live, where we work, we will find favor with God. We will find favor with man. If you believe that, shout yes! Shout yes! Shout yes! Hallelujah! 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 Ah, I am reminded of that scripture that they that know their God they hear a sound it is a sound of victory how many know how to celebrate victory how many know how to celebrate ah, I can't hear you I can't hear you I can't hear you ah, da, da, I'm going to lift my voice I'm going to begin to dance even before the sun comes up, because I hear a sound, hey, I hear a victory sound. Ay 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 ay, baraboos, era na ba na ba kato, era na ba zombi na ba 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 ba, era na 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 ba zombi na. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. You see, sometimes you gotta be reminded of who you are. The word of God says 
that you will trample, you will trample over states, over structures, and nothing over any means hurt you. I am looking for people who are going to trample.
you sing that? Come on, lift your voice. Let me hear you sing hallelujah. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, raise your voice. Hallelujah. 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 Just the voices. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, your breakthrough is at the end of your praise. Hallelujah. 
Come on, don't stop that praise. Come on, church, don't stop that praise. It's the beginning of a new week, which means God is ready to elevate you right now. Your God has never failed you, and he has never forsaken you. So today, all we have to do is give him the praise and give him the glory because it is finished. You are established. You are established. Come on and turn to your neighbor and say, I am established. Turn to your other neighbor and say, I am established. Because my God will never fail me. Come on and give him a shout. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. We ready to go. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you that the atmosphere is changing right now. Thank you that you are shifting it for me today. And that all I got to do is praise you and worship you. Hallelujah. Now all of your problems and all of your pain, all of your troubles, you can give it to Jesus. And all of your burdens and all of your cares, even your struggles, you can give it to Jesus. Because here's why. Cause he won't fail, he won't fail, no he won't leave you, no he won't fail, cause he won't fail. Your trouble. 
church, help me sing, cause he won't next to us God we're choosing to worship you God we're choosing you to give you the glory we're choosing to give you the praise Lord so we will let it rise from within us God 
Lord, take over in this place. Take over, God, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my way, but your way be done. Whoa. Yeah.
make some noise for Jesus who reigns, who sits on the throne, who's seated high but looks low because he doesn't forget about us. Come on and make some noise for your own time, God. Come on and make some noise for your forgiving God, your loving God, your God of many chances. Come on and make some noise.
Father, we thank you in the name of your son, Jesus. Your only son, your holy son. Father, we humble ourselves before you. We ask you to sanctify us and to purify us. Forgive us where we have missed it. Lead us in the path of righteousness that we may be expanded to receive what you have ordained for us. Father, today strengthen us. Open our eyes to see you and to know you better than we did yesterday. Father, elevate every burden that is upon all your people today. That, Father, we may find rest for our souls in you. Lord Jesus, glorify yourself now and eternally. And everybody said, Amen. clap your hands to the Lord Jesus. Listen, I'm excited for what God is going to do today. Maybe you are not, but I am. Hallelujah. Every time we're in the presence of the living God, every time we're in the presence of Jesus, our precious Savior, there is only one thing that God wants to do, is to conform us to his image. And the image of the Lord is not really an appearance. It is more of his being. <laughs> Jesus is not just a symbol of, uh, of a man. He is the symbol of God. Living as a man completely free, free. free. From every burden and every chain that this fallen world has. Amen. So God has called us to conform to his image. And every time we are in his presence, every time we hear his word, every time we pray, we are transforming into Jesus. Now, maybe you didn't hear what I'm saying. For those he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. As many as did believe on him, what did he do? Gave he the power to become. When you become like Jesus, sickness can't hold you. Amen. Let me talk to where the church is. Amen. Amen. When you become like the Lord Jesus, death cannot hold you. Amen. When you become like Jesus, enemies that try you will fail. Amen. Our greatest goal must always be consistently and continually striving that the work of the Holy Spirit will continue in our lives. And our duty is to make ourselves available for the molding of what God wants. As long as our spirit is available for God, God will show us things that we never even thought or knew to be possible. He's 100% capable of it. Amen. I want you to lift your hands before we begin. And ask the Holy Spirit... To mold you. Ask the Lord to be patient with you because he already is and merciful. Recognize that we are difficult to deal with, but he is merciful. Recognize that we will continue to fail, but he is more than capable to carry us. Ask the Lord to mold you. Lift your voice. Father, mold us today, O Lord. Mold us
mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6 to 11. Deuteronomy 15, 6 to 11. 15, 6 to 11. Uh, can we all read together? Yes. One, two, three. For, For the, the Lord thy God blesseth thee, thee and he promised thee. Let's all read together. Let me see where the overflow is. Let me see uh, 520. Okay. Wave your hands if you can hear me. Powerful. Let's all read together. One, two, three. For the Lord thy God blesseth thee as, as he promised thee, thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations. But thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hand from the poor brother. But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and, and shall, shall surely lend him sufficient of his need in that which he wanteth. Beware, Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and thine eye be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him naught. And he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Thou shalt surely give him and thy heart shall not be grieved when thou givest unto him, because that for this thing the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy works and in all that thou puttest thine hand unto. For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thy hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor, and to thy needy in thy land. You may sit in heavenly places. places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you all. Amen. Amen. I receive. Amen. Uh, last night I was in Houston for Apostle Innocent's anniversary. Amen. And then uh, I haven't slept, but the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to understand something that I probably, it's a broken record now. That... God is spirit, and because he is spirit, he operates with spiritual principles. God does not operate emotionally. God does not operate by your tears. God is not moved by anything that is carnal. If your tears or the tears of the world mattered, then a lot of the chaos we see would not be there because God would respond to it. Now, this does not mean that God does not care for people's pain. He actually does more than we could ever comprehend. But the issue is we, op we, we approach a God who is spirit not understanding the language he responds to. Because you have to understand that in the systems of God, when God ordained this world, he gave the least to man. So majority of the times that God is to intervene in man's life, man must invite God. God will make himself present, but he will not invade your life. Amen. God will do certain things in our lives, actually a lot of things that we never asked for, to propel us to a certain place in our life whereby we will completely open our hearts to him. But God will never, ever, 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 ever violate your will to either desire him or to reject him. I don't know if you're listening to me yeah. so far. Yes. So spiritually, you have to understand there are certain principles that we are to live by. Unfortunately, we abide by basic laws and we have not gone beyond milk. And the problem is when you cannot go beyond milk, there are certain mature things God cannot, um, what is the word I'm looking for here? God cannot share with you because you are not in the capacity to receive them yet. This is a real thing. There are things God cannot confide in you 
Not because he doesn't love you, but because he knows you cannot bear them. And bearing them doesn't mean it is bad news. It will be heavy for you. It simply means that it will be too much for you. Either you will abuse it or you'll be overwhelmed by it. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Now, every time, according to the law of the spirit, a child of God was never meant to borrow. Come on. Let me find somebody I can talk to. According to the law of the spirit, we were never supposed to borrow. There is no scripture in the Bible that actually encourages you to borrow. On the contrary, God wants to do everything to keep you from borrowing because there are consequences, spiritual ones, to being a borrower primarily. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Yes. Now, the reason why God does not want you to borrow because if you read in Proverbs, let's look at this quickly and then we'll come back here. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Let's start from uh, verse 6. Now listen to what the Bible says. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. But what is the lesson? People always say this, but they don't read to really understand what is the lesson. Verse 7. The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a servant to the lender. This is what your kids need to know. God does not want you to be in poverty. When you're in poverty, you become a slave. And if you're a slave, you cannot serve your purpose in God. You will serve somebody else's purpose. Mm. I'll say it one more time. When you are bound in the realms of borrowing, Whoever lends to you is not actually lending to you to give back. Spiritually, they want to own you. And to maintain that labor because you will not be able to catch up. I don't know if you're hearing me. I'm trying to explain something to you. Let's go back to the scripture we were reading before. I want you to see this. For the Lord thy God blessed thee as he promised thee. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. Look at what happens when you lend. But thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations. But they shall not reign over thee. Why? Because you never borrowed. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example. I am originally from a third world country. America sends aid all over the world. Those countries never change. Go look at how many billions they give to different nations. Those nations have no ability to pay back. They are giving to them. They are getting something in return. And now China is doing it too. If you go to Africa, most of Africa is owned by China now. Because they will come and say, we'll give you billions of this And the nations, they know they can't pay back. They say, okay, we just give us those mines. So the children will grow up in debt trying to pay off something. But there is good news. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 7. We are going somewhere. We are going somewhere. Trust me, we are just beginning. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren... Within any of thy gates, in the land which the Lord God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden thy heart, nor shut thy hand from thy poor brother. Verse 8. But thou shalt open thy hand wide unto him, and shalt surely lend him sufficient. Notice, God is saying lend them. (laughs) Lend sufficient for his need. In that which he wanted, verse 9, 
Beware therefore be not that be not a though in, though in your wicked heart saying the seventh year the year of release is at hand. Now notice this. If you have been in debt more than seven years, God must erase that debt. Amen. 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 In the law of the spirit, you should not be bound by a debt more than seven years. Amen. Teaching. I think I'm preaching to the wrong people. Teaching good. No matter what it is, whether it's school loans or whatever, every time we do this service, the next week people come back with... With, with a bunch of bills that just magically vanished. This one was paid off. We don't know who paid it. I received. Because in the spirit, no debt should last more than seven years. Amen. Because every seven years is the year of what? Release. Some of you have been battling with bills for 14 years, 20 years, 8 years, 9 years, you're still trying to pay off medical bills. Today is the end. Amen. Amen. Now, I'll show you how spiritually this works. Watch this. Number 7 is a prophetic number to God because it represents completion. But not only completion, it also represents rest. It prophetically represents rest. So it will be a violation of spiritual law if you belong to him and you're still bound in debt year after year after year after year. It is wrong spiritually. It means there is something you don't understand how it operates. Now, is this uh, um, removing the need for you to be good at managing money? Absolutely not. Actually, the church should be very educated with money. I don't know why it's such a taboo in the church. No, you should know how to handle money. Because if you don't know how to handle money, then you cannot express the virtues of God physically. Amen. There are things we need to do for God, and if we do not have resources in our hands, then it becomes impossible to do it. This lasts cost. Everything costs. You step out of your house, ching, ching. Something is deducted. Why? Because everything costs. Now, if we don't have funds, and I'm not only speaking about church. Some of you are in entertainment. Some of you are in business. You need funds in order not only to provide for your family, but to also carry out the agenda of God that he has given to you. There are people who are in need that need you. There are people who are broken that need you. Amen. There are families that are waiting on you. There are some orphans that are waiting on you. There are some widows and some widowers waiting on you. So if you do not progress and manifest the blessing of God, not just spiritual blessing. Listen, I'm 100% anointed. There are things I can do spiritually that God has given me the ability to do. But it is no substitute for somebody being called and they need a coat. You can't shandara ba 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 ba. You can't cover them in the blood of Jesus to be warm. Amen. Come on. Amen. This coming month, try to pay your mortgage in tongues. You can't fix it. So there is no substitute for money. In fact, God tells you, and I love how God is so real with us. God has never compared himself to the devil, but he has compared himself to money. He said, you cannot serve two masters. You either love one or hate one. You cannot serve me and money. Choose one. Notice God is telling you money is on my level because he can answer all things. Come on. on. Not the devil. You see, the church has glorified Satan. And Satan is not really the issue. Satan is a liar. But God wants you to have money, but he wants money to serve you as you serve him. Amen. Uh, Hello. Hello. So now, the seventh, number seven represents completion and also represents rest. But even profoundly prophetic, if you know, that the appearance of the Lord Jesus was a marking of the seventh year spiritually. Because the appearance of Jesus was to pay the debt. 
Boy. To pay the debt that we owed for sin. In order for us to have what? A new beginning. If you know the calendar of the spirit, we are actually in the seventh day. No, this is true. We are actually on the seventh day. No, it's true. We are waiting for the completion of the new beginning. Where the new Jerusalem will come down. But right now, you are already in the seventh day. Amen. If you have received the Lord Jesus. I think there are very few people that have the Lord Jesus in them. Let me look at, let me see where they are. If you have received the Lord Jesus, you are already in your year of release. Amen. Listen to this. If you read Luke chapter number 4, the Bible says that the Lord Jesus went into a synagogue and he stood up to read. He nominated himself to read. Can you bring it up for me, Musa? And they brought to him the book of Isaiah. And Jesus took it and the Bible says that he found the place written. He found it. He was not given what to read. He found it. And this is what he said. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To preach. You know he said all these things. And everybody looked at him saying. Whoa what gracious words. Is he saying? And the Lord Jesus looked at them and said, These words have been fulfilled in your ears. Not in your heart, in your ears. Because he said, It is the acceptable year of the Lord, where God doesn't care where you came from, what you have done, He is paying everything in full. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to verse 19, please. 20. <laughs> and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on, on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Verse 22. And all bear him witness and wondering at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this the son of Joseph? Notice what hinders the release of God over your life. Is that when the word of God comes. You want it to make sense according to your situation. Come on. Because you want to put yourself in the equation to make that word work. But the only thing that the Lord requires from you and me is to accept what God has said. Amen. He has the power to do it. Yeah. It doesn't matter how it will come. Yes. It doesn't matter how it will change. Yes. Whatever I have heard. Yes. If I believe it, it is done unto me. Amen. Let me explain to you something about faith. Faith is never blind. There is no such thing as blind faith because faith sees the impossible. Faith receives the incredible. Faith achieves the impossible. So whoever possesses faith is possessing everything that God has ordained for them. So if I am walking in faith, then it means my ears to hear God are available. Because faith does not operate as belief. Because belief comes, you need belief to receive what you don't believe. I'll say that again. You need belief to receive what you can't believe. Because in order for you to believe, it means it's not definite. Yeah. That's why the Bible makes a distinction between believing and faith. God told Abraham, 
I will make you a father of many nations. Abraham said, in my old age, you have given me everything, but you have not given me a son. God said, walk outside. Look at the stars if you can count them. That's how many descendants I will give you. And the Bible says in the next verse, and evening came. And Abraham went to sleep. So when God told him, go outside and look at the stars, it was day. Teach. 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 Come on. Teach. No, you didn't hear it. The, it was not at night. It was daytime. Go out. Look at the stars if you can number them. And Abraham is going along with it. No, I, I can't count them. He says, so shall be your descendants. Following verse, an evening came and Abraham went to sleep. Eh? Come on. So the whole time he's interacting with God. It's not evening. Why? Because God will never tell you things are going to change based on your sight. Come on. Teaching, good. Our sight is so short. Yes. We cannot see the workings of the supernatural or the impossible. So if we base everything off what we can see right now, it becomes a problem with God. I don't know if you can hear what I'm saying. So whenever God is building you up, he wants you to hold on to the principles of truth. Not feelings. Not sight. Because you don't live by that. Hello? Hello. The greater the mountain, the bigger your ears ought to be to hear him. Amen. Amen. Not the bigger the prayer. Because it is not about a powerful prayer. It is about the God who answers prayer. Amen. If your prayer moved God, then God is a genie. Then God is a genie. But if God is God, then he operates off his own sovereign principles. Amen. Amen. Not based on our command because you cannot command God. Amen. We cannot make God do anything. Amen. So how do we come out of these chains that have held us for so long? Is number one to understand that we are called to a higher standard. We are called to a higher place. Yes. We are not called to a place of struggle. Even though God uses struggle for us to discover him. I'll say that again. Struggles are not a bad thing. They are bad if you remain in them. Yes. They are supposed to be in our lives for a certain period, a certain season, for our development and our perfection in God. But if that pattern of hardship was with your mother, in your father, in your children, in your children, now there is a spiritual problem. It means either you are now have entered into a curse or demonic patterns. I wish you could hear me. The first form of deliverance and me being somebody that has cast out a lot of demons... I can tell you the toughest demon to cast out is your soul. Come on. Because you cannot cast out the soul. Come on. <laughs> you cannot pray for your soul. You have to renew your soul. Amen. And it is impossible for the soul to be renewed without the word of God. Amen. The soul is only transformed by the word of God, not prayer. Renew your mind by the reading of what? The word. It is the word of God that has the power to take your mind. Shift your mind into the place that God wants it to be. Because your body can never go where your mind has not been. If you're going to be somewhere, something has to happen to your soul. So God has to not only renew your mind... But he has to remove a guilty conscience from your mind. Amen. He has to remove a condemned conscience in your mind. God has to remove what you have normalized to be normal. And replace it to be, 
to, to the principles and the laws that he has ordained for his children. I, I was speaking and I was teaching yesterday uh, in Houston and I was explaining to them that there, there's a difference between uh, uh, making a decree and making a demand. Before a child of God can enter into a place where you make decrees, where you stand and say, by this time tomorrow, this and this will be how we prophesy in the church. Before you enter into that realm, you need to start in the realm of demand. If you read Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches us how to pray. He says, after this manner shall you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Allah be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then what does he say? Give us this day our daily bread. He did not say, Father, I pray, provide for me. No. It was a command. It was a demand. If I am your son, I should have bread. I didn't ask to be born. I didn't ask to be created. Amen. It is your duty to take care of me. Amen. And God himself says, I will care for you. I will dress you better than Solomon. Amen. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children beg for what? Bread. Bread. So notice it is an understanding that we have lost. That we claim we believe and trust in God's provision. But in actuality we don't. Thank you. We have become beggars. Yet silver and gold belongs to our father and belongs to God. So the primary thing that God has to do is to change your mind. To know that you have rights in the presence of God. When we pray for something, we are supposed to pray for something that is away from what God has constituted to be yours. So you plead for grace. You plead for mercy. That God will look at you and say, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do it because, because you are, you've made your case. I didn't, I didn't want to do this, but you know what? All right, I, I can let you permissive. I can give you my permissive will, and I will let you have this thing. But when you are in the realm of demand, because you are a son, God doesn't. E you don't even have to be right. Now you didn't hear what I said. When I look at my nephew, come, come, Bob's. When I look at my nephew, and I look at him with his dad. My guy has rights. Period. Whether he's bad in school, whether he is good and he's a good kid, whether he's bad or he's good, that's your child. Guess what? You're responsible. Amen. So for him to be prosperous, he needs to know that my dad is not doing me a favor. Come on. Come on. Good. You treat answers to prayer like a favor. No, it is your right to be blessed. Amen. It is your right to be healed. Amen. It is your right to have open doors. Amen. It is your right to excel. Yes. It is your right to succeed. Amen. It is your right to increase. Amen. These are not privileges. It is a right. Yes. I don't know if somebody is hearing me. Yes. So without a renewed mind... It is absolutely impossible to receive what God has for you. Because the capacity where or, or the room available that God is going to pour things into will not be available because the number one nature of God is he always blesses beyond your capacity. Amen. So if your capacity is already small, Then that becomes a problem to God because right now many of us are living on what we can capture. We don't have a way to hold on to the overflow that should go to our neighbors. Yeah. 
If you cannot help the person next to you, you are still poor. No, this is true. That is the definition of poverty according to God. <laughs> I heard that quickly. We cancel it. It's true. We should be canceled absolutely. There is a place God has ordained for you. If you look at how Moses and all these other guys prayed, you realize that we pray like hypocrites nowadays. We really do. Oh, Father God, you know you can do it. Father God, just do it. Lord, just do it. It's like we are cheering God to do what he already said he's going to do. Moses will say, your people want bread. We are in the wilderness, but they said they want bread. God said, okay, I will give them bread. Notice they were bold to make requests in places they should not. How can you be in the wilderness? There is no bakery. There are no shops. And you stand before God and you say, Moses, tell your God we want bread. To the point that God said, your fathers tempted me in the wilderness. But I showed them by feeding them the bread of angels. Amen. If you dare God, he will show you that he is God. Amen. Some of you are waiting for a good opportunity. To make your petition to God. Now is the perfect time, Lord. There's never been a better time for you to bless me, Lord. Look at how faithful I have been in church. Oh, Shanda Baba. Oh, yes, Lord. Yet the prodigal son, knowing his right, he went to his father and said, Give me what is mine. And his father did not say, You know, you are not mature enough. His father did not say, ah, uh, just wait a little bit. I'm going to hold you back until when you're ready. No. When you know you're right, God is actually eager to give you those things because he knows you are more of a candidate that will develop into managing the things that he will give to you. Amen. Because no one has the capacity to consume all of God's blessings. Amen. So there is no such thing of as uh, I will destroy the blessing of God. You can't. This is the absolute truth. There is no such thing as, uh, you know, I wasted God's blessing. So God now is angry with me. No. When God, if God is God, he should know. You didn't have the ability to manage it. And he still gave it to you. But why did he give it to you? Because he wanted to show you how much he can give you. And if you squander it, he's showing you that I have more. Now, have you matured? Notice, faithfulness does not always equate increase. That's good. I'm going to say it one more time. Should we be faithful? Absolutely. But faithfulness does not always equate increase. That is not the truth. If we are being honest, it's not the truth. The older son was faithful. Served consistently. Served in purity. But he got home and he was jealous. He said, Father, all these years I've been the right guy. I have done everything right. With sugar and spice. I have never complained. I have never rebelled. I have never argued. But you have never even given me a lamb to celebrate with my friends. Do you know what his father said? He says, uh, my son, don't you know all things are yours? So you are waiting for God to bless you. God is waiting for you to take it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me talk to somebody else. While you are still waiting for God to bless you. God is wondering, why aren't you taking what is yours? Because we expect the promotion in the kingdom of God is because I have been good. No. We will find this in the church all the time. I'm still waiting on the Lord. Hey, this Lord is always late. Is, is it, why is God taking so long? I'm, I'm waiting on the Lord. <laughs> The Lord will come one day. One day. Oh, that faithful day. 
God is saying, can you take what is yours? The kingdom of God suffers violence. Yes. And the violent take it by what? By force. force. Let me explain this for a little bit. Let me explain this. Sit, sit down for a second. Let me explain this and we'll finish. Jesus is saying this. He's saying, no man born of a woman is greater than John. Now remember, Jesus is also born of a woman. No man born of a woman is greater than John. But even the least in the kingdom is greater than him. Eh? This is a conflicting statement. What are you saying? And Jesus represented the new chapter that was coming in. So Jesus is saying, anyone born on this side of the law, no one is greater than John. But these new ones that are coming in, even if they are not anointed than John, the least in the kingdom is still greater than him because these ones have rights. And when they know their rights, they can take what is theirs by force. Hallelujah. Can you take what is yours by force? Yes. But how do you take what is yours by force? Remember, he did not say uh, those, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent steal by force. He said, take. It means it's yours. Take. It's there for the taking. No one is protecting it. No one is keeping you from it. Take it. But the violent part is your ability to be radical. Come on. Is your ability to be radical. Yes. Completely without a shadow of a doubt. Holding on to every word that the Lord has said. Yes. When the Lord said, I am above and not below, I should believe it, be convicted. Yes. I should walk in it. Yes. If my account is contradicting me, I said, account, you're wrong. Amen, amen. Instead of looking at yourself broke, you said, my account is so open, ready for the billions. Amen. Amen. Because when you are expanded by God, you see opportunity, you don't see lack. Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Let me see 520 overflow. Are you sure you can hear me? Wave your hands if you can hear me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so hear me by the spirit of the living God. Hear me by the spirit of the living God. Please hear me by the spirit of the living God. Your radicality. If that's even a word. Uh, I'm, I'm African, so forgive me. English came by means of a boat. <laughs> Your ability to be unapologetically radical. Now, I am not talking about foolish zeal, because you can be zealous and be foolish. Foolish zeal is when you are zealous without spiritual knowledge. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Yes. I'll give you an example of foolish zeal. Everyone has the need to hear from God. It is a good zeal. Nothing wrong with that. My sheep hear my voice. We should all hear the Lord's voice. But when we have foolish zeal is that when now we start celebrating people's downfall. Because it shows how holy you are. Or how you foresaw it. And now you're telling people how false this one is. That's foolish, foolish zeal. Because the zeal of God makes you cry for souls that are losing. Amen. If you go online right now, everyone is false except the one who is saying it. I told you this one is false. I told you that one. That one is false. This one is false. Okay, who is real? 
Mistakes don't make anyone false. The Bible says, a righteous man falleth seven times. Notice the Bible did not say when they fall, they stop being righteous. Right. It said, a righteous man falleth seven times yeah. and rises up again. But the wicked fall and fall into what? Mischief. They are a wicked person falls and is destroyed. Yeah. But a righteous man seven times and he rises up again. Yeah. So if a bishop, an apostle, a prophet makes one, all the years you've been enjoying their message... Teach. Saying, ooh, that brought me through dark times. Then you hear, oh, maybe he went to a party or something. You say he's false. You're demonized. Right. There's a devil in you. Yeah. Straight up devil in you. Whether it's true or not, maybe, maybe not. The point is this. We are called men of God. The man part is first. God party second. A man that belongs to God. He did not say he's changed. He did not say God man. He says man of God. So if the man stumbles, it doesn't mean the God has stumbled. Amen. Come on. So good. The God that lives in them has not stumbled. Amen. When you make a mistake, Jesus in you has not stumbled. Yes. The Jesus in you is still standing in order to pull you up. Yes. Amen. So that you can deserve every blessing that God has ordained for you. Amen. So whatever it is in finishing. Let, let's read this and, and finish. I'm sorry. Let's finish. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all he commands, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. Notice God wants you to always be the one in control. Amen. 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 Let me talk to those who are ready to be in control. Amen. God wants to always set us in a place whereby the economy doesn't affect us. The government changing doesn't affect us. The climate of the world doesn't affect us. Wars don't affect us. Because we reign with Christ above nations. Amen. Verse 2. And all this blessing shall come on thee. And overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So there is a blessing that will come on you. And there is a blessing that is supposed to what? Overtake you. Meaning if you stumble today, there is still another blessing waiting for you tomorrow. Amen. 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 That's good. I receive. The Lord is saying some of you, there is already a blessing. Yes. Amen. I receive. <laughs> that has already preceded you. Yes. See. That you are about to walk into and all your debt are about to disappear today. Either God will erase it or he will give you funds. He will give you opportunities. To fix the problems that are at hand. He will do it. <laughs> blessed shall thou be in the city. And blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall, thy, shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy what? Keen and flock of thy sheep. Verse 5. Blessed shall be thy baskets and thy store. Hey. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou what? Goest out. Verse 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee in one way, and they shall flee seven ways. Hold on. Oh, hold on one second. God said he will cause them to be smitten. But look, notice what he says. How will he let them be smitten? He will let them rise. Come on. Teach. He won't stop them before they rise. Come on. 
Ah, the strategy of God is crazy. God's strategy is just his own. He will actually, they will think they can win. And they all line up coming against you. That's when he will strike them. So that everyone can see them scattered. In seven ways. Why? Because it is your season of rest. So even your enemies represent your hour of rest. Amen. Now you didn't hear what I'm saying. Oh your enemies can be those bills, can be actual people, can be devils, witches. We don't care. They represent our rest. Amen. Because when enemies show up is when God sets a table. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> now some of you didn't hear. Let me talk to the overflow on the other side. God has never set a table on the absence of your enemies. You need enemies to have a table. Yes. Because God wants to prove himself in the presence of people. He wants witnesses. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou setteth thine hand upon. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. <laughs> the Lord shall establish thee an holy people unto himself. Look at your neighbor say, I am holy unto God. I am holy unto God. Not unto you. Not unto, unto you. you. Amen. As he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the command of thy Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. Verse 10. Hey. All the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And they shall be what? Afraid of thee. Hey. Verse 11. We're about to finish. And the Lord shall make thee a plenteous in goods. Notice God is just interested in inflating you. Yes. Yes. He has no problem doing that. So if somebody tells you they have a problem with prosperity gospel, just tell them they don't believe in the Jesus they claim. Amen. Amen. Everything in this chapter, God is not talking about spirituality. Physical. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. Verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Hey. After you have received all the blessing, there is still treasure. Come on. The heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season. And to bless all the work of thy hand. And thou shall. No, no, let's read it together. And thou shall. Lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. One more time. And what? And, and thou, thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. If your neighbor is not reading, read it to them. One, two, three. And thou shalt lend unto many nations. And thou shalt not borrow. Verse 13. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not. And thou shalt be above only. And thou shalt not be beneath. No, no, no. Hold, 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 hold. Notice. You only start becoming head when you can lend. Amen. Amen. Look at your clapping. Are you sure this is for you? Maybe I'm preaching to the online people. Notice you only are considered the head when you can empower other people. Yes. That means you have reached the climax of God's blessing. Yes. Is when people can come and say, ah, I'm in trouble, this and this and this. Okay, no problem. You set the interest rate and you give them. Amen. Because you giving them doesn't make you luck. You don't need to knock their door tomorrow and say, where is my money? Because you know you have a seven-year window for you to receive. Amen. 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 
I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying here. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commands of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day to observe and to do them. Notice, God has always wanted us to be above and not below. But you see, every time we talk about being above and not below, we forget the money part. <laughs> I am above <laughs> and not below. Uh, how can you be if you cannot lend? Good. The borrower is servant to the lender. Our governmental systems are actually controlled by lobbyists who are sent by corporations. People are given money and because they have no way of paying back or they have been bought, they have to fight for these people's laws to go through so that they can do whatever they want to do. Notice whoever has the power to give has the power to control. That is what the Bible says. It is better to give than to receive. Notice God is powerful because he can give. Amen. No one can give to him. Amen. Good. Amen. Good. Satan is broken because he's a taker. He is not a giver. You are more powerful than Satan because he cannot give anyone anything. He can only take everything. That is why he's called a thief and a liar. He has no power to produce nothing. The Lord will give you supernatural understanding. He will give you supernatural ideas. That that business that died, it will be revived. Amen. Amen. God will increase you in grace so that you may stand in places you don't qualify. Amen. Amen. I'm actually prophesying to somebody. Amen. I receive. I receive. The Lord will give you favor that those who are meant to block doors for you will be the one that open doors for you. I receive. The Lord will not only take and erase your debt. But the Lord will do more than that. He will give you resources that you will never be in debt again. There will be no more collection calls on your phone. They will be calling to apologize. To say, uh, I think we made a mistake. This was paid. Uh, actually, we owe you. I receive. The question is this. The question is this. Will you be able to obey God with your resources? Amen. God does not increase you if you don't know that the things you have, you have borrowed. They belong to him. The earth is the Lord's and everyone in it and everything that is in there. They are all his. So if God makes you a multimillionaire today and he asks you to do something, will you actually do it? That determines. Some people are like, um, uh, <laughs> that is what maturity is to God. I have attended quite a few funerals. I've never seen a hue hole following somebody to the grave. I've never seen a wire being done to the grave. It doesn't exist. The houses we have built, our children will live in them, and other people later will live in them. We will go to the house and say, this is new, but somebody used to be there. Nothing really belongs to us. We just have them while we are here. Our riches are actually with God. So will God look at you and truly say, this one will do my bidding even with the resources. This one will obey me even with the resources. Now, when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, 
the Lord played a trick on the Egyptians. And this is what will happen today for you. Amen. Amen. The Lord told Moses, tell the children of Israel to go to their neighbors, the Egyptians, not their, no, no, go to the Egyptians and tell them to lend you gold. <laughs> Borrow gold. Tell them to give you gold that you will give them back. And the Lord moved on the Egyptians. They gave all the gold that they had to the children of Israel. But they did not know that was actually reparations. <laughs> Come on. Come on. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they bankrupt Egypt. And there was no paying back. God crossed them over the sea and shut it. And from that moment, Egypt declined because all their resources were gone. Those who held you captive Boy. in the name of the Lord Jesus, yes. those who held your pay, yes. those who held your... I feel like I'm talking to myself. The Lord will cause them to find you. Amen. You won't tell them I need to borrow. They will say, ah, you know, we've been having this thing and uh, we realize there's a mistake here. We are paying you back. I receive. The louder, the amen, the greater, the miracle. Amen. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And I want you to trust the Lord as your father because he is. Our God is not only a good God, but he's a good father. Meaning he's very acquainted and intimate with our burdens and our struggles. He wants nothing more than to heal our heart from disappointment. You see, disappointment is a killer of destinies because it can frustrate a soul to not go after things that God has ordained. Because when you have received so many no's, it's very difficult to pick yourself up. This is the honest truth. You can be persistent, yes. You can fight, yes. But at a certain point, you become wary. I want you to know that God will renew your strength today. Amen. The Lord will renew your strength today. The Lord will renew your strength so that you can not only pursue what he has ordained for you, but for you to enter into the promises that he has ordained for you. Amen. I will tell you this before the Lord Jesus. It is by the grace of God I can say I don't belong where I am according to man. If it was up to man, I should not be standing where I am. But because of God's sovereign mercy and grace, and because he purposed my life, even when things looked strange, all I held on to is what God told me. Amen. And even now, I have not even done 1% of what God has for me to do. I am still holding on to that word because God has never failed me. Amen. And he will not begin now. Amen. You are alive because God has not failed you. Amen. No matter what has happened to you, it has not killed you because God is faithful to you. Amen. God is still working out some things for you. The question is, will you Position yourself to receive from him. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. Yes, Lord. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Yes, Lord. And ask the Lord to show you grace and mercy. That your heart will be restored. That your heart will be restored. Because of his holy touch. That will give you strength again. For the next chapter of your life that is about to be unveiled today. This chapter will be not 
as it were before where you struggled with bills you struggled with this you str- now your life will be centered in the pursuit in the complete pursuit of the destiny that he has ordained for you satan wastes our time when we are fighting to survive yet we should be chasing destiny so as your hands are lifted ask the lord for new strength lift your voice and speak to the lord father give me new strength father give me new strength god show me your grace and your mercy god renew my heart god give me your strength god Show me your grace, God. Give me new strength. Show me your mercy, God. So as I step into this new chapter, God, new strength to me. Embrace new God. strength in my body. And your mercy, God. To sustain, to withhold. Zippy the next level. The next level. This next level. Let you have for me. Let you have for me. Restore my heart. Oh, my God. Restore my heart. 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 Father in the name of Jesus. Say Father in the name of Jesus. Today I take what is mine. Today I take what is mine. In the mighty name of Jesus. The blessing that belongs to me. I pull it from the heavens now. Pull it from the heavens now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to receive it.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy birthday. <laughs> lift, lift your hands to the Lord. Lift your hands to the Lord. Whatever it is you know belongs to you. Take it by force. Amen. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to pray with every ounce of your being. To receive what is yours. The Bible says we call those things that are not as if they were. Begin to call those things that are not as if they were. Open your mouth and begin to speak to God. Lift them up to heaven. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Ah, Bishop Ohi, you are here. God bless you, sir. Grab those bills that are stubborn. Grab them, lift them up. Man of God, who did you come with? Where did you come from? Stand, stand here for me. Where did you come from? Nigeria. Did you fly from Nigeria or you live here? Uh, well, I'm visiting. I came in about two weeks ago. Oh, from Nigeria straight? Absolutely. Oh, okay. God bless you, man of God. I want to pray for you. Stand here for me if you can. I'm coming. Amen. Let me hear from me. He pointed me to you. Amen. Hey, baby. Look at those eyes. <laughs> ah, bonjour. 
ça va ok lift 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 those stubborn bills up don't worry about the sick we'll pray for the sick not in, let's grab those bills understand the grace of god and how it moves amen man god says bills don't bring anything else amen whatever represents your bills lift that thing up amen. the lord is about to sort it out yes amen. the lord is going to take care of it amen lift it to heaven man of god see fashion hey <laughs> i love it <laughs> I need your designer. Whoever did this is too much. She's killing it from the bottom to the top. <laughs> he said, "Oh no, I'm anointed today. I'm a pull in like Moses <laughs> with a shawl and everything." <laughs> lift, lift it to heaven. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, Father in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. You understand my battles. You understand my battles. And Lord, you have already made a way for me. And Lord, you have already made a way for me. You have already decided that I will be victorious. You have already decided that I will be victorious. That nothing in my life, that nothing in my life should ever make me stagnant again should ever make me stagnant again father i have entered into debt for different reasons father i have entered into, into debt for different reasons. reasons you know all the reasons you know all the reasons some was carelessness some was carelessness some was lack some was lack some was mismanagement of funds some was mismanagement of funds father i ask you to forgive me father i ask you to forgive me and father you are the god who gives more than second chances father you are the god that gives more than second chances i know today you will give me more than a second chance father i know today that you will give me more than a second chance i believe oh lord i believe oh lord that a new chapter is about to be open that a new chapter is about to be open a new chapter is about to be unveiled a new chapter is about to be unveiled for me and my family for me and my family father as i take these bills father as i take these bills and i step on them with my right foot and i step on them with my right foot from today these bills will never be impossible to take care of today these bills will never be impossible to take care of they are simply a stepping stone from today. They are simply, simply a stepping stone from today to launch me to the place you have called me. To launch me to the place you have called me. Take those bills, put them down and step on them with your right foot. Just place your foot on it. Hey, Africans. Africans out. <laughs> Don't worry. Just place your foot on top of it. You are trying to kill what is already dead. Uh, you didn't hear what I said. Amen. You are trying to squish what is already. <laughs> Amen. 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 As you put your right foot on it, begin to decree and declare that it will never be the same pattern again in your life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. <laughs> Lift your voice, lift your voice. It will never be the same again. My soul is Randa Kande Madana Mazadeli. We can't have another bando. Let us be dead. We can't. Sakama Kandele and the road. They call a man the
Bible says, by your own words shall you be justified, or by your own words shall you be condemned. Please don't clap your hands if your mouth is not saying anything. Are you hearing me? Yes. Our mouth needs to be a response to our prayer. Amen. That is proceeding from our heart. Just saying amen is not solving anything. You are the best prophet of your own life. Yes. Amen. I'll say that one more time. You are the best prophet of your own life. Amen. You are the best prophet of your own life. You can prophesy your own life better than I would. Are you hearing me? Have I ever prayed for you? Have I prayed for you before? And I've prophesied to you? Who did you come with? By yourself, come quickly. Let me take this veil from you. Amen. So I want you to pray genuinely. Are you hearing me? Yes. Genuinely. You are not only going to speak positive things that will come to pass, but you are going to declare that you will never be in this stagnant position ever again in your life. Amen. 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 Don't just clap your hands. Genuine prayers. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. yes. One, two, three. Lift your voice and pray. In the mighty name of Lift your voice. Lift your voice. <laughs>
Lift your hands to heaven, everybody. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. Every spirit that has been holding me back. Every spirit that has been holding me back. Mentally. Mentally. Spiritually. Spiritually. Physically. Physically. The spirit that has brought stagnancy and poverty in my life the spirit that has brought stagnancy and poverty in my life in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus let this spirit be broken 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 be broken over my family be broken over my family be broken over my children be broken over my children be broken over my career be broken over my career be broken over my destiny be broken over my destiny in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty, in the mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus, let it be broken. Let it be broken. Lift your voice and begin to break that spirit. Let me 
I thought I was not going to prophesy today. Prophesy! <laughs> Lift your hands to the Lord. Say in the mighty name of Jesus. In the, in the mighty, mighty name, name of Jesus. Jesus. Today I set the tone for my family. Today I set the tone for my family. I set the tone of prosperity. I set the tone of prosperity. I set the tone of elevation. I set the tone of elevation. I set the tone of acceleration. I set the tone of acceleration. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice. I set the tone of acceleration. They are the zone of elevation. Father, today we set the tone for acceleration for our families. We set the tone for prosperity. We set the tone for increase. Father, we set the tone this day. Today, we set the tone for increase, for prosperity. We set the tone for increase. We set the tone for, for prosperity. Today, for my family, for prosperity, for increase, for prosperity, for peace. I am the trendsetter. I am the trendsetter. Let Santa Barbara jump on the massive today. I set the tone. Are you here? Yeah. Are you here? Yeah. Listen to me. Understand this. You are entering into the realm of possibility. Amen. Amen. I should have remained on the other side. Amen. Amen. You are entering into the realm of possibilities. Yes. 
There is nothing you will desire from God that you will not see come to pass. Amen. The Bible says you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Amen. I decree and declare beginning tomorrow. Yeah. You begin to see that goodness. Yeah. The louder the amen, the greater the miracle. Yeah. The louder the amen, the greater the miracle. Hear me. Your days of sorrow are done. Amen. Your days of pain are done. Amen. Your days of confusion are done. Amen. Your days of frustration are done. Your days of calamity are done. Amen. Your days of emptiness are done. Amen. You are entering into fruitfulness, fruitfulness. Amen. Fruitfulness of your businesses. I receive. Fruitfulness in your career. I receive. Fruitfulness in your body. I receive. Fruitfulness wherever you step. I receive. Fruitfulness in everything you're involved in. I receive. I see fruitfulness all over your life. I receive. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Are you still here? Yes. Whether in the overflow of the main sanctuary, lift your hands up. Even those who are watching at home, lift your hands up. Your enemies will be put to shame. I receive. Now let me say to those who are online, maybe you can't hear me. Your enemies will be put to shame. Those who oppose you will fall right before your eyes. Those who challenge you will be put to shame. I receive. The Lord will never allow you to be ashamed. I receive. Every battle you're facing belongs to God. I receive. And there is no battle that Jesus has ever lost. I receive. Celebrate because you're coming out of wars. You're coming out of battles. Hallelujah. You're entering into peace. Peace, peace, peace. In your home, peace in your family, peace in your place of work. I see peace all around you. In the mighty name of Lift your hands, lift your hands. We're not done. You will harvest where you never planted. I receive. Let me say that to somebody else. Hey. I see the Lord taking hardship and labor from you. I receive. You will reap where you never planted. I receive. All the years that you have worked hard, God is about to pay you back for all the lost years. I receive. I see restoration, restitution see. coming to you in the name of Jesus. See. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. Death is a thing of the past for you. I receive. Things dying will never be your portion again. I receive. Dreams are coming back to life. I receive. Businesses are coming back to life. I receive. You will no longer need people to give you opportunities. You are the opportunity. I receive. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. You have not been seeing the fruits of your labor. 
you have been working hard but there is nothing to show for it I think I'm speaking to somebody the spirit of God is ministering to me your prosperity will become like pregnancy I receive you will no longer be able to hide it I receive it will be open for all to see because God will reward you openly I receive your baskets that would run empty will never run empty again I receive let me talk to those who are online Your baskets that could run empty now they will no longer be empty. I receive. It will always be full of bread, fish and wine. I receive. You will not know lack anymore. I receive. But not only will your baskets be full, your storehouse will overflow. I receive. Listen to me. When the Lord gives you a storehouse your storehouse is not used for your daily needs your storehouse is for emergencies yes, man. and the emergency is not whereby you cannot use what is in your basket the storehouse is designed for drought that in the season of drought you will be as if I receive. Your storehouse will only be activated during drought. You will not need to dig into your savings anymore. Ah. When the world's economy goes strange, your storehouse opens so that you can lend. I receive. Joseph prospered the Pharaoh during the drought because of grain. When C-19 happened, many people dried up because they had no storehouses. Those who had storehouses prospered them more. I see God filling your storehouse. I said, I see God filling your storehouse. I see the Lord filling your storehouse. Listen to me. As you walk out of these doors today, you are stepping into green pastures and still waters. I receive. Yeah. You are entering into green pastures and still waters. I want to stop, but God doesn't want me to stop. I have already killed prophecy. <laughs> Hear me by the Spirit of God. You will not walk under an open heaven. Heaven will come down to you. I will receive. His kingdom will descend upon you. I will receive. And His perfect will will be done in your life as it would in heaven. I will receive. Ah, ah. Celebrate the Lord. Clap your hands and celebrate the Lord. Clap your hands and receive it. Clap your hands and receive it. Listen to me. 
Listen to me. The Bible says, spiritual things are foolishness to a carnal man. When the children of Israel faced Jericho, God told them, just celebrate. And walls will come down. He didn't tell them to pray. He just told them, celebrate. Overflow. Can you hear me? Let me talk to Overflow. The guys in here. Wave your hands. Wave your hands. Are you hearing me? All God told them is celebrate. The greatest prophetic act is your ability to celebrate. Amen. See. Now you are not ready. Listen. Listen. The promised land that is ordained for you is occupied by giants. I thought I was finished. Let me let me come down and finish well. <laughs> is occupied by what? Giants. But these giants, you are not meant to fight with them. What drives the giants away is praise. Amen. 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 Shh. Demons love the sound of torment. I'll say it one more time. Demons love the sound of torment. Demons wants to hear ah, wah, frustration. Uh, I can't do it anymore. I'm tired. Things are difficult. Things are like this. Things are going like this. Demons love the sound of torment. Celebration is the sound of heaven because heaven is a no you know people have this picture of heaven that heaven is like people walking mm. ah, hallelujah oh, oh. the bible says make a joyful noise it did not say make joy if it is not noisy it's not heaven amen because noise irritates those who are sober but if you are drunk in the spirit, you love noise because noise is evidence that God has done something. Make a joyful noise! Make a joyful noise! Clap your hands and celebrate the Lord! Now, I know uh, the church did not prepare for this. But the angel of the Lord just spoke to me. The mind of God. Hallelujah! On Friday, this Friday, this Friday, we're going to have our first overnight prayer. All the details will be put online. It will be our first overnight prayer. It will be full of prayer, small teaching and crazy prayer. Amen. You are living. Don't worry, online you will be still in the spirit with us. Open this for me. Open this for me. Uh, you have a testimony from Thursday. Come, come. I just need to touch this. Thank you. Tell me what happened. When you called my dad up, you were praying for my parents. And you mm. had said that you saw somebody having abdominal operations done. Yeah. And the moment it didn't click because what we were talking about, I've had a hernia for three years in my okay. abdomen. Mm. That's been causing me pain, like severe pain. And then I woke up the next morning at 6 a.m. I didn't wake up with pain. And I've been like sore, like as if it... Um, 
came back together. Everything on the inside and the hernia is completely gone. I feel nothing inside and I'm closed. Amen. <laughs> Clap your hands for Jesus. Look at your celebration. I don't... Let, let me be honest with you. The issue we are having now is our editors cannot keep up. <sighs> Aram, spirit of destruction. <laughs> I'll tell you this. Our problem is actually we have... Our editors cannot keep up with the amount of testimonies. That's a good thing. Amen. It means God is moving in a dangerous way. Amen. Mm. Come, come, come quick. No, no prophecy. I'm done. Uh, my strength is. Uh, look at me. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You will set the tone for your family. Amen. Hear me. I want us to do a dangerous praise break. No. <laughs> I want us to do a crazy praise break. I want the most danceable song we can sing. No, you look at these people, children of Zion. No. <laughs> <laughs> we want to celebrate <laughs> what God has Onaga Onaga by public demand Mary <laughs> uh -huh. are you ready Mary yes. we are going to dance for God and I will tell you why by the time we are meeting Thursday you already have a, pro a, 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 a testimony because of what God has already established. You see, you're clapping, I don't know. Let me see the overflow. Let me see my thousand people on the other side. Overflow, show me overflow. Uh -huh. And the thousands online, both on Prophet Lovi and also on to me. By Thursday, there will be tremendous testimonies already. Amen. Look at your amen, eh? Amen. Hey, eh? There will be dangerous testimonies already. Are, are we ready? Yes. I'm waiting for Bishop Mike. Papa. Yes. We have a debt cancellation that happened in service right now. Okay. Yeah. Let's hear it. $200 from my second mom and she said she well she texts me just n well 12 o'clock she said hi my love I hope you're having a wonderful day I just woke up and the spirit my spirit told me to let you keep the $200 <laughs> 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 and also, I want the very fat blessing one and also, that one is deep and also, I wanted to tell you that I carried baby clothes last year, um, September. I know I have a baby and I couldn't have one. The doctor said I had PCOS. And wait, wait, wait. Now that's the testimony. Come. <laughs> Come. This is what I want. Come. You know, I don't want Revelation Church to have a poverty mindset. So I won't celebrate 200. Not because it's not good. You are far above that. Amen. Amen. Okay, tell me, young lady. huh? Okay, so I was diagnosed with PCOS, so that's polycystic um, ovarian, ovarian syndrome. And the doctor said I couldn't have babies or... I would have a lot of miscarriages, mm. and um, now I have a six-month-old. Amen. <laughs> Look at your clapping. What is wrong? <laughs> Hallelujah. I carried uh, baby clothes, and while you were praying last.
last year, um, I was just waving it and giving God thanks for my Samuel. And no, I have him. Amen. Wait, wait. <laughs> Did I even prophesy to you or no? Never. I never prophesied to you. No, I came here on my birthday on the 28th of June. Well, and you just believed God when I was declaring stuff. Yes. And you told God what you wanted. Yes. And he gave you the boy you wanted. Yes. Amen. You guys play with this church. You don't... You know, I don't understand why people are offended of the power of God. Me, you come back and I'll give you a child. You know, in this church, we prophesy and we also pregnify. Amen. <laughs> I'll say it one more time. We don't only prophesy, we also what? Pregnify. No, barrenness is not our portion. Amen. It will never be. It is not God's desire it will never be. People get offended when people say, I want a baby. I say, what do you want? You want a boy or a girl? Sometimes I'll decide, okay, I won't give you a boy. But when you read their Bible, you see it in there. But when we do it, it is witchcraft. Which witch gives people children? When I was pregnant, um, he prophesied to me. Um, but before, since we're speaking of pregnancy, I had the worst pregnancy. And not the simple fact that I didn't have... Um, the father of my child, it was just so emotional. And I was in a place where I'm just like, I couldn't say why God, because God didn't put me in that bed, I did. Mm -hmm. You know. So, you, but, I love you because you of know? how real you are. So I'm just like, Lord, uh, I can't blame you. So all I can say is just like, God, remember me. And... I was so, because of that, I was like hot in my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So nobody knew. I was coming to everywhere. Nobody knew. And one day I was, I came in here and I was walking through and I put the jacket over my stomach. And I'm just like, I feel so bad for hiding the gift that you gave me. Um, so many people, they can't. You know, I'm just going through. And I, mm -hmm. I went to the bathroom and I cried. Mm -hmm. And I came back out and I'm just like, Lord, I'm ready. The moment I said, Lord, I'm ready, you came to me and you said, God want me to pray for you. When I opened my mouth and said, I'm ready. You said your light has come, which was confirmation because as soon as I found out it was a baby girl, that's what her name mean. And I was like, Lord, is that what you want? What do you want her name to be? And when you said light has come, um, that was, I was like, that's her name. It, that's it. So you said, once I have this baby, my career is going to take off and it's going to be like a plane that don't need a runway. I'm just gonna come up from the ground and I'm just gonna go high. Long story short, even though it is such a long story because it's so Did I tell you the gender of the baby? I can't remember. We, we discussed, yeah, we discussed the gender of the baby was a okay. baby girl. Okay, perfect. We discussed it. Mm -hmm. So um, I had this dream and I felt wind right after I gave birth. And in the dream, I know I just felt the wind. New Year service I came and um, the service was the year to win. It was an older lady that helped me get in, but I was helping her while she was in, and she was from Finland. And um, she said, that's what my name means. It means win, it means win. So I said, okay, miracle signs and wonders. Now I'm paying attention to the signs. Mm. I, felt the, I felt the win, this is the year of the win. I'm helping the win. <laughs> I, you know, like, I'm like, okay, Lord, I see where we going. You know, so. I gave the baby my first phone call. I had my, um, a guy that I work with, his name is Theo Rossi. He's an actor. Um, he called me for a job with him and Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman is a big legend. Called, said, this is for you, right? I said, thank you, Jesus. So another one came. My girl called. She said, Teresa, I got, I got the perfect role for you. I'm like, well, what is it? She gave me the lineup. The names are so big. It was definitely something that, the talent, yes, but resume-wise, I'm not qualified for because I'm not there yet. So I told her, I said, well, I already know how this go. I audition, I audition. They always go with a bigger name. She said, no, I'm telling you, we audition in the bigger names, and this is yours. So I'm like, ugh. I did the audition. I went to Miami to work, and I went to um, Prophet EJ's church, and it was his anointing service, and... Um, he anointed me too, and he said, only she can do it. Only her, nobody but her, nobody but her. 
So I did the audition. The director loved me. I flew in, met the director. It got silent. And I just remembered the words you said to me. And I also remember we was in service one day and you was saying that when God has already spoken to us, but yet we're still praying for something that he's already spoken. So and to walk in what we receive and to walk in the harvest. So I, I took that mindset of praying for what you have already said and praying for what I want, want to be done. And I just start walking in what is already done. So I'm just like, Lord, it's nobody but me. It's nobody but me. I flew back to Atlanta to do the audition in front of the directors, the writers, in front of everybody, because keep in mind, they went, back, they went back to auditioning people to search for people after they met me. And two hours later, the director calls me. And he say, we got Samuel Jackson. We got Don Cheeto. We got Taraji P. Henson. We have Terrence Howard. All we missing is you. Amen. I'm proud of you. <laughs> the Lord is good. And you know this is just the beginning of many. And I'm, I'm playing long. God is, God set you up so good. And everybody that just like when you in my industry, I've, I've got so many no's and I've said no so many times to roles for the sake of my faith and what I believe in and what I'm not gonna fold for. And God just showed me that you can do it with me. Amen. Amen. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of you. I wanna thank you. I really do. No, I, I... I really do. I really do. I wanna thank you just for your commitment, your dedication to God. I, I, I can't imagine the things that you go through and have went through, the things that we can't see, the things that go on between those two ears, the things that you go through in the dark because we all go through our own valley, and I just pray that God give you the endurance. Seriously. I receive. I'll tell you this. My, my, my battle is always for this. There's nothing I cherish more and I desire more than the people of God to prosper. That is really my biggest desire. If the people of God can prosper, then the kingdom of God is in good hands. Because the reality is, I can't preach to people where you're going, but your life will be the perfect example that will bring people to Jesus. Amen. And that's what we want. Amen. I'm proud of you. I need, I need, you need to bring baby girl again. I need to see her. Yes, yes, yes. Clap your hands for her. Congratulate her. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come. Yeah, yeah. I asked her to come. I just want to bless you. Stand here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now. Rings. Overnight service. Overnight service will fix that. I can't do anything if he doesn't tell me. Even though I take it, if he doesn't say anything, if I move, I'll move by myself. Many of our questions will be answered on that faithful day when we stand before him. Amen. Be encouraged. There are things that we will not understand here, but we will understand when God does it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up what you want to give to God and we are going to dance dramatically as we give to God. Father, we thank you for the gifts that are in our hands that we can honor you with that came from you. Glorify yourself. Exalt yourself. Consistently and continually continue to reveal yourself unto us. And show us who you are by, Father, gracing us to stand and to be in places we are not qualified. Father, Bless us with good health. We thank you for your word that confirms we will never run dry. May your name be lifted now and forever. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Are, are we ready? 
Are we ready? Yeah. I'm...
May the grace of the Lord and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Go from this place knowing that you are blessed in Jesus' name. God richly bless you and we'll see you on Friday. Hallelujah. Oh, Thursday, yeah. And then Friday. Wow, wow. So Thursday, Friday, Sunday. We're excited. He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working. He's working.